Today, the United States government is raising the threat level to Code Orange. Inconvenient but necessary. Terror alerts, increased security at airports, longer lines at concerts and sporting events. We've had to change our routine since 9-11. But has the massive bureaucracy of our government changed as well? I think one of the major problems of our intelligence community prior to 9-11 was that the various uh, agencies of the federal uh, intelligence community uh, did not share information very well. The 2001 attacks on America caused law enforcement at every level to rethink the way it does business, especially when it comes to sharing information. It is a realization that we're all in this together that uh, in information has to be shared in order to uh, be meaningful. Since 9-11, the Patriot Act has served to eliminate the confusion in the sharing of that intelligence information. Since 2001, nearly 450 suspected terrorists have been taken into custody, and more than 250 have been convicted or pled guilty to terror-related activities. Terror experts call the 2005 arrest in Torrance, California, an example of using, quote, the network to beat the network. The police officers who arrested two of the suspects in what looked like a routine gas station robbery found evidence that these two were planning a terrorist attack. They passed the information on to the local Joint Terrorism Task Force. And together they traced the steps of these terrorists and expose the entire cell. Bronx on the air. But law enforcement can't always count on a lucky break. The key to preventing another 9-11 is human intelligence. Hearing about the plot before it happens. Any bit of intelligence that uh, can give us a, a leg up to help us better protect the city is, is certainly uh, a welcome. The New York Police Department fast-tracked NYPD Shield pairing cops with members of the community who can get close to the source of any threatening activity. We ask them for anything that, that can help us, anything that they see of a suspicious nature. Being able to listen to talk on the street meant hiring more Arabic-speaking officers. In this day and age, it's uh, helping us with investigations, it's helping us uh, interact with the community. As I say, uh, New York is the most diverse uh, city probably in, in the world. For the FBI, the events of 9-11 prompted a sea change in its traditional role of investigating crimes. Lee Hamilton was co-chairman of the 9-11 Commission that had harsh words for the FBI's readiness. The big problem here in the FBI, the big challenge, is to make the shift from law enforcement to intelligence gathering. Uh, that sounds easy, but it's a very complicated task when you're dealing with an organization as big as the FBI. <laughs> And part of that task is to win the trust of communities where the seeds of terror may grow. We don't want to spy on our own people, but if we see anything suspicious, we'd be more than happy to uh, you know, tell the law enforcement. We live in this community. We, lo we go to these mosques. If there's any extremists, we will be the first one to notice it. So if we as Muslim youth, as Muslims in general, see anything, for us, we can go tell the law enforcement firsthand. That was a key factor in the recent London terror arrests. The London plot shows clearly that human intelligence trumps electronic or signal intelligence every time. But British authorities are able to play by different rules. The FBI is bound by the U.S. Constitution. We have certain parameters that must be met for the FBI to conduct a full investigation, for the FBI to conduct surveillance activity. The British tend to let these terrorist plots go a little further than they would in the United States in an effort to build up stronger cases against the people involved in an effort to find out who these people might be associating with. Yet even in hypervigilant New York, some plots still go undetected. In 2003, an attack was planned on New York City subways. Al-Qaeda had developed a new style device called a Moob Talker for the delivery of hydrogen cyanide. It could have created a thousand casualties under the streets of New York. Authorities uncovered the plot through human intelligence, but only after Al-Qaeda had called the attack off. The system is far from foolproof, and the question is not whether America will be attacked again, but when.
The authorities, the intelligence services in this country have been effective in preventing any additional attacks since 9-11. But we're not out of the woods. When we come back, the most notorious terrorist you've never heard of. Much of South Lebanon is in ruins after this summer's month-long war. But the Lebanese organization Hezbollah and its sponsors, Syria and Iran, boast of an historic victory over Israel. Hezbollah's TV network showed pictures of destroyed Israeli tanks. And the face of Hezbollah, Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah, proclaimed a new order in the Middle East. But the spoils of victory may actually belong to a man who remains unseen. A terrorist in the shadows who knows killing firsthand. A man who before 9-11 murdered more Americans than any other terrorist. While Osama bin Laden makes statements on television, there are almost no pictures of Imad Mugnia. He doesn't care whether you even know his name. He is head and shoulders above any other terrorist in the world. Whatever tradecraft, how he picked it up, I don't know. But it is so good that it's probably unbeatable. Ahmad Mugnia is the leader of Hezbollah's terrorist arm. He is the person that has uh, managed operations which included attacks on uh, the U.S. Embassy and the U.S. Embassy Annex in the early 1980s, I believe 1983. Attacks on the Marine Barracks in that same year where 241 Marines died. American intelligence officials also believe Mugnia was behind the murders of CIA Beirut Station Chief William Buckley in 1984 and Lieutenant Colonel William R. Higgins in 1988 and the attack in 1996 on Kobar Towers, a Saudi facility that housed U.S. troops. And according to Danny Yatom, a former head of Israeli intelligence, it's Mugnia's unseen hand that struck the first blow in the recent war between Israel and Hezbollah. It looks as if he is the one that uh, is responsible also to the last uh, terror uh, attack that killed uh, eight Israeli troops and kidnapped two Israeli troops. After which we uh, started our operation in Lebanon. Mugnia is said to have destroyed all records and documents that describe his past. He's believed to have been born in 1962 and grew up in the Shiite neighborhoods of Beirut. The teenage Mugnia was recruited by Palestinian militants, eventually serving in Yasser Arafat's elite guard. The 1982 Israeli invasion of Lebanon further inflamed his hatred for the Jewish state. And when a U.S. peacekeeping force landed in Beirut that year... This was against the interests of the Shia and against the interests of Iran, and Iran, of course, is the, is the, the single most important sponsor of Hezbollah, and uh, he therefore worked with Iranian intelligence hand-in-hand -hand to conduct attacks on us. Like the terrorist shot heard around the world, an attack that became the model for future terror attacks against the U.S. Mugnier was responsible for the Marine barracks attack in 1983 that killed 241 American soldiers and Bin Laden saw that as a model for his future attacks because if you think about that attack pretty much immediately afterwards President Reagan ordered the United States out of Lebanon and so that's the model that Bin Laden wanted to to implement everywhere attack the United States in places like Yemen or in Kenya or in Tanzania or even in the United States itself and it will pull out of the Middle East and so Bin Laden saw Mugnier as a sort of a role model and a role model for countless others on the Arab street. And he is a folk hero in Tehran. He's a folk hero among the Shia in Lebanon. He's just a killer of innocent people, killer of anybody. Kurt Carlson is that rarest of Westerners, a man who came face to face with Mugnia and lived to tell about it. He was badly beaten, but survived the brutal hijacking of TW.